For the first time, the ruling of Progressive Congress, the APC, has elected the youngest women national leader in the person of Dr. Beta Idu from Cross River State. Dr. Idu was born on October 27, 1986, and hails from Ibalebo Village in Abi local government area of Cross River State, emerged alongside 76 other national officials at the 2022 National Convention of the APC in a keenly contested election, where she scored 2,662 votes to defeat our closest driver, Helen Boko, who polled 117 votes. Better, a graduate of medicine and surgery from the University of Calabar, a Harvard certified fellow of the Royal Society for Public Health, United Kingdom, and until recently, the Crossroads State Commissioner for Health and National Chairman of Nigeria Health Commissioners Forum is the youngest female to become the national women leader of the All Progressives Congress. Reacting to her victory at the polls, she thanked delegates from other states and promised to bring women together and ensure their unity as they trudge on to the next level ahead of the 2023 general election. Joining us now from our Abuja studio is Dr. Beta Idu, National Women Leader of the All Progressives Congress. She will be telling us how she intends to pilot the affairs of the APC Women Wing ahead of the 2023 general election in Nigeria. Dr. Beta Idu, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, well, first let's say to you congratulations. And then personally from me, I mean, you are a Malabres. Thank you very much. So I'm uh, excited that we have a ma Malabres in this uh, very important <laughs> position. I defended you here when the controversy started. But tell us your journey uh, to this position, how you feel at the moment, considering the fact uh, that there were persons who protested, who said, no, you are not fit and proper person uh, for this position, particularly as you were one of those uh, against Gensas uh, protesters uh, before you parted from the PDP uh, to the APC. So how did it go? How did you manage to get here? Okay, first I want to thank God who made it possible for me to get here. I want to thank His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari and his dear, lovely wife, the mother of our nation, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, for the love, for the support um, to a young person, to young people in general, um, trying to mainstream young people, trying to mainstream women in politics, women in governance. Um, it, it's just a wonderful coincidence that this convention um, held in the month of March, and this is really the month where women are coming together in one voice to say women should be mainstreamed and governance should be proper. I also want to thank the governor of Cross River State, His Excellency Senator Professor Ben Ayadi, and his very beautiful wife, my mother, Dr. Linda Ayadi. They have really, really been um, that um, strong support um, pushing young people. I came into governance at a very tender age. I was in my 20s when I came into governance, and they have given me all the support so far, and I remember very grateful, but most importantly, to the Nigerian woman, to the APC woman, to the entire members of the APC Congress, the governors who holistically endorsed my candidature, and indeed every key stakeholder that worked with us to achieve this success. I'll also want to thank those who contested with me. Every single woman deserves to be here, right, to lead another woman. We're all leaders in our own right. However, one person has to go at a time, and I'm definitely very sure that more opportunities will open up for them. It's not been an easy journey to get to this point. First, at every point in time, you're faced with that word, you are too young. When I came into governance um, in my 20s, I was told that same statement, you are too young. 
every single time you're faced with that statement, you're too young. And I keep asking the question, is it about the age? Is it about the gender? It's about capacity. It's about what you bring to the table. It's about passion. It's about your values. It's about the innovative ideas you can push, the energy to do what you ought to do. I think that's what should count, the merit on it. I think that's what should count rather than um, how young you are. Well, I've heard that all my life, so um, it wasn't a shocker again when I had you were too young um, to get to this position because in the history of African politics, no woman at your age have ever become um, a, 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 a woman leader of any political party, not even to think of a women leader or national women leader of the ruling political party. And so um, I got a lot of opposition back and forth. Um, some persons stood for it. A lot of persons stood for it, to be very honest. Unfortunately, like you know, um, the thing with bad news, it continues to fly even more than the good news. And um, the, the voices were kind of loud. But then those who were on the ground, the grassroots, those who were going to vote, the governors, the, the delegates that were coming to the convention knew the capacity which I could bring on board. I have headed um, all the commissioners of health in Nigeria for a couple of years now, and um, I probably am, um, of course, I'm the youngest commissioner. I was the youngest commissioner for health up until some months ago when I resigned. And um, of course, it, it, this has been um, my trajectory um, so far. It wasn't an easy journey coming to this point. Every day you had to um, work on propaganda, um, false stories, people were cooking up things, writing things that I would never even imagine I would write or say, but I knew it was all part of politics. I just decided to stay focused, stay put my, um, my focus on the goal and the important things which I want to do for the Nigerian woman and indeed women in my party APC, um, just so that we can get stronger, speak with one voice, get the female gender or the woman mainstreaming in governance, in politics, in leadership, I put my, my whole focus on that goal, and that's the passion that drove me to this point. And we got on my side. I was able to emerge victorious um, at that tightly contested elections in the last convention. Well, good for you, Dr. Edu, and I hope you continue to confound expectations. So I have two questions for you. Can you take us through exactly what is the role of the National Women's Leader, and how do you plan to make your own distinctive mark in that role. And secondly, we're in an era now of some kind of judicial activism where you have some court rulings trying to sanitize the political situation and stop the seemingly wanton decamping of candidates from one party to another, saying that the votes belong to the party and not the candidate. The sort of nuances there are lost on the general public quite often. So tell us exactly why the party structure is so important. What exactly is party supremacy? What is the role of, like you said, grassroots mobilization? And why exactly is it that candidates are being told, not so fast, it's really about the party? So parties are um, indeed come with ideologies, they come with their goals, their visions, their policies to change things. And um, members of that party um, are supposed to be persons with like minds who buy into the um, decision or buy into the policies and the vision of that party to improve the lot of the general populace. It's really like a vehicle um, through which we can actually deliver the dividends of democracy and um, party, like they said, remain very powerful because they have the ability to touch people at all levels, the high class, the rich, the poor, um, those at the grassroots, those who need help, and to be able to really put out the right story in the right frame where everyone can understand. And really, that's going to be my role, to really unite women across Nigeria, to harmonize them with one voice, to demand for the rights of women, to stand up for women, to speak for women to attract more women into our party, to empower grassroots women and ensure that they are financially empowered, they are 
educationally empowered and they are able to speak up for themselves and also for their families and society. Women should be able to um, get that right mainstream in the seat on the table. Uh, they should be given a chance to contribute positively to um, the development of our great nation and I'm glad that our party APC is doing that and we would even do better as we go into the next elections. Um, to be very honest, I think it's, 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 it's a slap on human rights to say that people cannot move from one party um, to the other. Nowhere in the world does that occur that people cannot move from one party to the other. They have the right of association. Our constitution gives us that right of association. And so we must look into all of this and see how we can marry the interest of the party with the political structure and ensure that our democracy is more entrenched and it gets stronger by the day. We shouldn't come up with um, things which would put our very tender democracy um, really in a bad light or um, cause some kind of um, instability or instability, sorry, in our um, democracy. We need a lot of uh, strength right now to move on. For APC, I know APC is very strong. Um, APC is the largest, biggest, most dynamic, most youth-friendly party in Africa. It's very female women gender sensitive and um, we would be able to do a lot. I believe very surely that even the judiciary um, would um, um, work with Nigerians, not just the party, would we'll work with Nigerians to see that our democracy is entrenched. People have the right to move from one party um, to the other. That's their own right. They can, ideologies change, people's beliefs change and they have that right to move and um, the party which they're moving to uh, becomes their new vehicle uh, to carry on and I don't think anybody should be um, really um, affected by their movement from one party or uh, to the other. There's freedom of association, that's what our constitution says. And any point in time where you want to draw people's right to freedom of association, then there's a question mark on it and we need to be able to work on it. But I'm sure um, the party chairman who is very, very dynamic, who is well experienced, well, in fact, well, is, is a learned, um, great great achiever, he would be able to put a lot of these um, things straight and really give the public what the direction for APC going forward uh, will be. The president um, has huge confidence in the new um, party national working committee that has been set up and he believes that we would be able to use the next one year which is basically like a sprint to ensure we galvanize more support from the party across board. We are going to have a lot of persons decamp into our party and truly that will in no way affect um, where they came from or sorry it will in no way affect what they presently occupy because they have that right of association um, the party has done so well, the president has done well, and indeed we would continue to do even better to keep that social contract between APC as a party and the Nigerian people. All right, better. Congratulations once again. Two things. Uh, number one, I, I want to talk to you about women inclusion. Uh, when I checked through the list of uh, those elected, about over 70 of them, I'm not sure I found up to 10 to 15 women. And the positions we had women at were positions that normally national, I mean, uh, leader of women, national women leader, zonal women leader, and the likes like that. Uh, when are we going to have a day where we're going to have a woman probably be the chairman, you know, of the APC? That's one. Number two, I'm not sure I found a lot of young people in there. I think it's probably only you and Dio Israel, uh, both of you. 36-year-old people uh, on that list. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Do you think your party is inclusive enough? <coughs> and secondly, uh, so, what, how are you guys you know, tackling the headwinds? You have a lot of headwinds. In fact, the papers were saying this morning that about ten, uh, five to 10 states, uh, some of the allies of people like Arek Beshola and some other you know, people are decamping from your party already. They're leaving your party. And some people predict that your party will further implode after the primaries, that if some big wins don't get the ticket, uh, then they'll see the mass defection out of the APC. So those two questions, better. 
Okay, first, I think um, we are in a work um, in progress. I would want to say we're a work in progress. Um, before now, we used to have fewer women um, really come to positions in the party. We used to have very few young persons, but I can confidently tell you that we have several other women. I was not the only woman. We have a woman as the deputy treasurer. We have a woman in several other positions in the party. Even at the zonal level, we have a lot of women there, not only in positions that are typically for women, like the um, national wom uh, women leader or the zonal women leader or stuff like that. We had other positions like the treasurer, which I'm telling you about. She's also a woman and several other positions are also occupied by women. I think there's a zonal organizing secretary that is actually a woman, uh, a, a young friend of mine. She's also a youth. Um, her name is Zenep too. She's also a youth from the north. She is very young and um, she is an APC woman too. So we have lots of young persons. In, at the zonal level, there are lots of young persons who actually got a seat on the table even at the level of the national working committee lots of young persons um, got um, a seat on the table I'm sure when you get all of their profiles you would know that really APC is that party that is now beginning to um, mainstream young people and is beginning to mainstream women in particular and give them the rightful place to sit at the table to make their contribution to the development of the party and by extension the development of our country. Um, I'll say this again, right? Um, we have lots of naysayers who wait on the sidelines waiting for the party to um, just go down the drain. No way. APC um, uh, is that one party that will continue to go stronger and stronger by the day. You can remember before we had this convention Everybody said this was the end, the convention was the end, it would never hold, APC would just go into pieces. They said all sort of things. But we had one of the best conventions in Africa. And that's to show that we are resilient people, we know what we stand for, we know what we believe in, and we'll push to the end. Of course, as we go into the primaries, it's even going to get better. Remember, there's an ongoing reconciliation. I was a member of the National APC Reconciliation Committee, and we went through basically all the states in Nigeria, reconciling um, persons who are aggrieved, giving them a listening ear, and trying to profile recommendations, solutions to that. Good enough, the chairman of the Reconciliation Committee and myself as well as also another member from the Reconciliation Committee, we are also a part of this new executive at the APC National. And we are coming in to work on the recommendations from what we have seen. I'm sure when you hear from the chairman, he would clearly tell you um, the actions which will swing into to ensure that members are given the rightful place in the party, the feel that inclusion, the feel that mainstreaming, the feel that they're being carried along. He's one person who is open to all and he's surely going to be able to carry everyone along. Remember his politics will negotiate, will appear appeal to people, would ensure by all means that we keep our members and even add lots more to the party. Remember, we're going in for a general election and we're very, very positive, basically 100%, that APC will come out victorious. Okay, Dr. Edu, I mean, well, as I told you at the beginning of this conversation, I'm biased. You and I were products of the same university. And I took a look at your profile, excellent profile. Uh, but then you just moved away from medicine uh, into uh, politics, and now from APC to PDP. Now, the choice that you made in 2021, is it because of your godfather, uh, Ben Ayade, um, or you are really convinced that the APC remains or is the future of Nigeria? Or you are just doing this because you belong to a political camp, and is this the end of your career in medicine? Okay, number one, I'm a medical doctor, right? And um, I would always be a medical doctor. I'm a professional. 
And um, in fact, even as part of my um, programs um, for my new office, I would use this platform to offer uh, free medical um, services to underserved population in Nigeria and attract more persons, keep the social contract for my dear party APC. So I'll say two things and I'll say them really, really quick. Number one, when there is absolute performance and when I can see some very strong positive um, indices that shows that this party knows exactly where it's going to and this party is delivering on its mandate to the Nigerian people, then of course, every logical person will want to follow suit. Everything must not or may not be 100% um, um, correct, right? But when you have more of the positives, then it's time to join force and ensure that this maybe 70% becomes 90% or if possible, 100%. And that's why we're here. Governor Ben Ayadi is my father. Dr. Linda Ayade, dear my, uh, she's my mother, and this is beyond politics. This is re a relationship that has been built over time, right? So I moved to APC out of conviction that this was a party that I can join forces with to really, really move things to um, a greater height, and that's why I'm here. And of course, I'm here because I completely also support the governor. The governor was very, very clear about his decisions and the reason why he was moving. It was not time for people to sit on the fence and um, accuse or attack. What can you do to make things better? I tell people, wherever you find yourself, what are you doing? What can you do to make it better? It's not really about persons, it's about you, you first. It's Nigeria, it's in Nigeria. So to stand aloof and look and say, this is not right, or this is right, or this is wrong, or this is right, it's not really, really, really the best of solutions um, going forward. We all need to jump into the ring, get involved, keep our social contracts with ourselves, our families, our society, our community, because someday at the end of life, you have to look back and say, really, what did I contribute? I want to say this, this is not the end of my medical career, this is not the end of my professional career, I'm a doctor, I'll always be a doctor, I would use this to even expand my reach as it concerns my medical practice, and then, of course, I'll use this as a platform to unite Nigerian women, reach out to them, and ensure we achieve some very strong, uh, um, of course, landmarks that cannot be erased in the history of time. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Beta Idu. Uh, congratulations again, and from my end, yeah, we look forward to very strong malabitic action as you take over as the uh, women's sure. leader national of the All uh, Progressive Congress.